Hi guys, this is Christina from Justin and Christina's RV Van Life. Today, we're going to be showing you exercises that you can do outside with very little equipment with either an elastic or a park bench. Here we go. Today we're putting everything together to create that full body park workout. So these last couple of weeks have come to this video. First exercise, that 90 degree row. Again, remember the, waiter, the weight is in your heels, knees are bent, abdominals are contracted, and that butt is also contracted. As you can see, our elbows are coming up towards a 90 degree angle in line with our deltoids, our shoulders, and we're really thinking about working the upper middle back muscles. We're gonna flow right in to that lower row. As you can see, I have the same posture, abdominals are contracted, knees are bent, weight is in the heels, and the arms are coming to a maximum of a 90 degree row, and the elbows are close to our body. Remember, with this row, we're trying to work our entire middle back. As we move on to the next exercise, it is a, an elastic deadlift. As you can see, our knees are bending. We're not only moving and bending through our hips with our knees bent to work our lower back, but we're also assisting the movement by squeezing our shoulder blades together. This is the last exercise that is strategically used to work our back muscles. This includes the lower back, middle back, and upper back. Let's move on. So now let's wrap that elastic around the park bench as you've seen in previous weeks and follow our back movements with some chest movements. So we work the back of our body and now we wanna work the front. So this is not only a movement for our chest, but of course, our shoulders are working. So right now we're doing the equivalent of a flat press. Here we're working mostly the upper fibers of our pectorals, of our chest, as well as our arms and front of the shoulders, front of the deltoids. Here as always, knees are bent, glutes are contracted, so your butt is contracted and so are your abdominals so the elastic doesn't bring you backward. We're gonna move on to the equivalent of an incline chest press with the elastic by simply shifting our hands upwards. Here, we're not working just our chest muscles, but we're also putting an emphasis on the front part of our deltoids, the front part of our shoulders. And of course, our arms are assisting in this movement. Moving on to the last movement of the chest series a front lower chest press. Elbows are closer to the body. And again, we maintain the same position, abdominals contracted, glutes are contracted, and knees are bent so that we are not brought backward with the elastic. Awesome, guys. Next on the list, let's work those shoulders. Ideally, the front, middle, and back will be next. So as we've previously shown you in past videos, you want to loop one handle of the elastic through the other one at the lower part of the park bench. Here, we're doing the equivalent of a posterior fly, meaning we're working our shoulders, but specifically the back part of our shoulders. We're doing them one arm at a time, so what does this mean? It means that we have to keep our knees bent, our abdominals contracted, and in order to keep the same resistance from one deltoid, one shoulder to the next, we wanna keep about the same distance and ankle to the park bench. If the angle is not similar, you're actually going to be either decreasing or increasing the resistance that the elastic is offering you. And ideally, what we wanna do is work our body symmetrically. So our second exercise, this is primarily for the front part of your shoulder and a little of your upper back. Here, of course, your forearms are working. It is the equivalent of an exaggerated front raise. 
that you can do with dumbbells in the gym. This is the same principle as the previous exercise where your knees are bent, abdominals are contracted, and so are your glutes. Again, thinking about keeping the same angle from one muscle to the next as you switch arms. This is extremely important with an elastic because unlike free weights, the farther you go, the more resistance you're adding and the closer you are to your elastic, usually the easier the resistance provided by the elastic. This is especially important if you're trying to keep muscular symmetry and help yourself posturally. Next exercises. These are going to be a set of exercises for your rotator cuffs, which are muscles that are very tiny and help stabilize your shoulders. They're actually underneath your deltoids, underneath the nice shoulders that we see when someone's really developed. These are extremely important because they actually help stabilize your shoulder girdle. So here our elbow is going to be stuck to our side and we're going to try and keep our forearm in a 90 degree angle while we pull the elastic outward with a resistance that is gentle but consistent. So try not to use momentum. As in any other exercise that we recommend, we want you to think about technique and using your musculature, meaning we want to keep momentum to a minimum. As we do the other side, we make sure that the length of the elastic that we used for one side of the movement for our external rotator cuff is about equivalent for the other side. Again, we're looking for muscular symmetry. We don't want to create one side that's stronger than the other. We want to try and balance our body as much as possible. Let's move on to another rotator cuff exercise. This one is about keeping your elbow aligned with your deltoid and using the muscles inside your shoulder to think about bringing your hand or palm aligned with your ear. So you're going from a position where you are aligned with the floor, where the movement is coming from inside the shoulder to align with your ear. Again, a 90 degree position for the other side. And let's not forget the essentials. Every exercise, knees are bent here to stabilize, our glutes, our butt is contracted, and our abdominals. Here, shoulder width apart is recommended, but you can take a wider stance to increase stability in the movement. Here, the elastic will want to bounce back. Now let's move on to legs to a step up. Step up. As you can see, my heel has to be well placed on the step. And as I come down, I lean slightly forward, but not too much so that I can control my descent and truly use my butt and my legs to come up and down. I am not allowing myself to completely fall down into the movement. This exercise is pretty simple in the sense that our human body is made to do it, like when we're going up and down stairs. Here, the exception comes with the height of the step. So this is technically an advanced variation of the movement because it is quite high. If I'd want to decrease the intensity, all I'd have to do is go up and come down on a lower height step. So you could actually do this anywhere where there's stairs and you're not in the way of someone coming up and down. Uh, you could do it on a regular step in the gym. Doesn't really matter. We just have to note that the higher the step, the more likely it is that you'll wanna bend forward a little bit too much and also the likelihood that your knee would want to surpass your toes. So with that in mind, I invite you to really try this exercise at different heights. Of course, different heights equal on both legs so that you work equally and control your descent. If you have knee problems, it is really important that you have, do this on a stair so that you have true control of the movement and you can hang on to something as you try it out. But it is a great exercise and it even increases your heart rate. 
here we go to an advanced modification of the split squat here of course it is advanced because the bench is about the height of my knee the lower the bench where you're placing your back leg the less advanced the exercise also one must take into account that that front leg is on an unstable surface, making this exercise even more difficult when it comes to balance. Here, once again, although our front body and trunk is coming forward, we're not allowing our trunk to touch our knee. Our front knee is not passing our toes it is remaining consistent and that back leg is coming down at an angle that is between 45 and 90 degrees. This exercise as mentioned before is great but a little bit difficult. Now that we've done some major muscle groups, let's move on to the recommended tricep movement. As we showed you in the previous weeks, let's put one handle through the other in order to increase the stability of the elastic and attach it properly to the park bench. Here for this tricep extension exercise, as we've mentioned before, squeeze the abdominals and glutes. Here have an increase in stability by using your forearm on the bench to secure yourself. As you can see, the elbow is staying at a 90 degree angle as we extend it. Moving on to our overhead tricep extension, our elbow is slightly out as if we would do this with a free weight. And again, as usual, knees are slightly bent about hip width apart, abdominals are contracted and so are our glutes, our butt muscles. Now let's move on to the other side. We're making sure that the length of the elastic is about equivalent to the previous side that we worked. Again, leg is bent our abdominals are contracted and so are our glutes. Elbows are staying, well in this case elbow is staying at about 90 degrees aligned with the torso. As we extend we want to really think about contracting that back muscle tricep. Now let's move on to the overhead tricep extension. Same thing as what we did on the other side, elbow is slightly out, but it's still aligned with the deltoid and we're extending and coming back. As we extend, we're thinking about contracting those tricep muscles effectively and without using momentum. Again, abdominals are contracted, knees are bent, and your butt should be contracted. They are your biggest stabilizer. Now, let's pump up those biceps. As we showed you previously, the more you wrap that elastic around the park bench, the more intensity there will be when you execute your bicep curls. Here, the elbows are slightly lifted, almost like a concentration curl that you can do at the gym. Again, knees are bent, abdominals are contracted, and our glutes are also engaged. We come up and down, trying not to let the elastic control the movement, but really using our biceps to create a contraction. Second exercise for your biceps. Here we go. This one, let's place the elastic at the lower part of the bench and use a hammer grip. Here, our elbows are again locked to our body, but they're slightly lower than the previous exercise and we're coming up in a hammer grip, meaning that our thumbs are to the sky and we're not twisting the movements. This actually works the long head of the bicep. Next, but not least, let's work not only those biceps, but those forearms. Here, as we take a step back, we're thinking once again about having our knees bent, abdominals contracted, and we are doing the lifting bicep curl movement, but with our palms to the floor. Awesome job. Now let's move on to the next exercise that we recommend in all full body park workout. We're gonna be working our inner thighs. So as usual, we wanna loop one handle 
inside the other one to secure it to the lower part of the park bench. I wrap my elastic a minimum of one time around my ankle area in order to increase the resistance. I use my opposite hand to anchor myself to the bench as well as the elastic. The supporting leg has a bent knee and I am at an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. Of course, once I've accomplished one side with the sweeping inner thigh movement, I want to have the equivalent resistance on the opposite leg. In this position, you guys should be able to see that my knee on my supporting leg is actually bent and this protects not only my lower back, but also my knees. Let's move on to the next exercise in our full body park workout. We're going to do a butt kicking movement. Here the bench is an ideal location to do the extension and retraction in this movement because the bench offers us additional stability that we can hold on to. Here the elastic is wrapped around the foot in order to increase resistance and you're pushing through with your butt, your glutes, almost in a leg press type of movement. If you are actually engaged in any kind of martial arts or kickboxing movement, it is almost the equivalent of a side kick with resistance. Here, do not be shy. Anchor yourself correctly to the park bench in order for you to have the greatest amount of stability. The supporting knee is bent and I am chambering or bringing my knee in towards my body as I am completing the movement. This is a great and fun exercise that not only works the glutes, but also stability. Good job. Last but not least in our compilation, park bench modified planks to work our abdominal region. Our first movement can be done on a bench. If you wanna increase the intensity, you know what I'm gonna say. Bring this movement to the floor. Here, we are bringing and tucking in one knee at a time and thinking about rolling the spine. Our second movement is a leg lift movement. Here in the planking position with a slight contraction, moving from one leg to the other, we are thinking about contracting our butt muscles to not only work our abdominals, but also all the core muscles of the trunk. The last recommended movement, side plank sweeps, which we've shown you in a previous mini park tutorial. Here we're thinking about contracting the side of our glute muscles, sweeping the leg outward. This looks like a leg workout, but it's actually for abs, promise. Guys, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Tell us what other movements you'd like to see.